Hey internet guitar peeps, you better start your engines because your favorite piano slash guitar slash motorcycle company has revamped their Revstar line and we're going to tell you all about it, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with the Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like those videos. If you'd like to support us, visit our Spring Store link below for custom shirts like the one I'm wearing, and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So today we are checking out Rev Stars from Yamaha, which sounds like motorcycle-inspired. Uh, mm. Musical instruments you know from yeah. Yamaha, um, and I'm gonna just put it out there. I think the next frontier in the guitar market competition is Fender's gonna do an ATV or motorcycle or something. An you engine. know, we'd be forced to buy one. We'd have like three or four in the store. You would. It's like you must carry yeah. all of these models and two Fender motorcycles. And we got plenty of guys who would buy them too. One hundred percent. We got ranch guys playing custom shops. They're gonna do it. I love with Yamaha that if you want to be like the guy that has like just the brand loyalty, you could have your piano, all of your pro audio gear, your amp, your motorcycle, and your electric guitar, all as Yamaha. Pretty fantastic. But brand we do loyalty. have Rev Stars. You think the name is from that aspect of? The I know business? it has something to do with. I was just reading on the website. It's something about bikes in London's scene. You know, in the old school days when London was calling. Yeah, they, it was calling. I mean, you got racing stripes on these. You got automotive-esque colors, you know. Definitely. Yeah, this is called... I think that's a Swift Blue. Swift Blue. I believe this is Flash Green. It is Flash Green. Flash yeah. Green. They're sharp colors, for sure. Mm -hmm. And the others, I mean, there's Wine Red, or Hot Merlot. Because a lot of people... Because who wants... Because everyone wants their Merlot Yeah, hot. it's got to be hot. Um... <laughs> It's like hot Dr. Pepper. Yeah, it's a hot pepper. Who drinks dude. this stuff? You've got a hot Merlot. Uh, you got some nice kind of two-tone fades. Um, I do like these colors. We were talking about it earlier. Swift blue is a good color. It's reminiscent, but maybe a little darker than the Miami blue mm -hmm. from Fender. I think it works. I like that they painted the neck the same color, but in a satin. The satin. Yeah. Um, and this one, that's, that's more like a hot Cabernet on the back. <laughs> Real fruit forward, that's but also right tannic. Um, yeah, so... This is standard series. This is the element, which you can kind of tell is the standard series stripped down to its element. Absolutely. There yeah. You go. Um, and so there's three lines in the revamped Revstar line element, standard, and then there's professional. Those are made in Japan. We have not received those yet. We'll do a video, obviously. These are both made in Indonesia. Yep. Indie. Indeed. Nisha. So. Very cool retake on these. So some of the changes that they've done, uh, by the way, we should say, I know this model comes with a P90 this alternative. This does come with P90 this one and a case. Not. And a case. A gig bag. That this one does not. Loose in the box, no padding. Right, yeah, no it just P90s. rattles around. Um, not really. It's got some padding. But uh, no gig bag, no case, no P90s. Um, they are both chambered bodies. Mm -hmm. Mahogany neck with carbon fiber reinforcement. Uh, mahogany body on this, mahogany with a maple cap on that, which must be just for the sonic aspect of it, which you know half the internet says doesn't matter, yeah. and the other half says does. Um, but someone over at Yamaha thinks that it does, because you can't tell it's maple. They put it on there for yeah. a different reason. But they are both chambered. The surprising thing we should say about that is they're still heavy. They're pretty, pretty heavy guitars. Yeah, I don't, so I, I'm not quite sure why. Um, yeah. Given the chambering that's being done, it's mostly kind of up here in the wings area with this cool kind of double cutaway body. But yeah, it's got some heft to it. Yeah. Not in a bad way. It's not like less, 70s not, less not ball too, heavy. Not too bad. Um, the thing that I like, just because we're talking about the feel, these both came with Elixir electric strings mm -hmm. on them, and they feel super good. Um, it feels like a well-made guitar when playing it. Yes, it's a little heavy. But the fit and finish is really nice. Brand new Elixir strings on it feel really nice. And they've got pretty different pickup switching options. I mean, these are humbucker models, as you can see. This one comes with P90s. That one's got a three-way switch. They've both got a push-pull knob on the tone, which I like that they just did master volume, master tone. Yeah. I think it's cool. Two humbuckers. This has got a five-way switch, though, um, which opens up to in-between sounds, which I'm, you know, you can get those kind of single coil halfway right. position four and two. 
The push-pull on that one is the dry switch. High-pass filter gets a little more pointed, and it's not necessarily a coil split. We're playing but it with, kind of acts, it sounds like it, yeah. but it's not. Yeah. Yes. If I didn't know that it was the dry switch, I would just be guessing, okay, they didn't made a really nice They did a coil tap balance. without hum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sound, it doesn't have a ton of volume loss, but that's the whole point. High-pass filter, get a little more pointed, a little cleaner with your tone. This over here is called the focus switch, and that is a whole filter in and of itself that pushes the mid-range. It says it darkens the highs a little bit, so it feels almost like you're starting with single coils and then bumping it out. Sort you know, of. It's, it's throatier. It's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, and this whole guitar, I think, there's two observations we made uh, right off the bat. That one has higher gain. Yeah. I think it's interesting too that when you look at the specs, Yamaha just simply says the element has like Alnico 5 mm -hmm. pickups. Um, they've actually named those like something VE5 or something to that. Yeah, effect. something like that. Um, which I assume means that they're also Alnico 5s, but it's, you know, they're naming the pickup. It's yeah. a slight spec bump. And they're hotter. Um, they, they have more output. They've got a bit more growl to them. Um, yeah. They're a bit bigger, yeah. A little fuller. So even without that focus switch, it is it does sound a little chunkier. But when you pull that focus switch, it gets this throaty mid-range, uh, you know. Focus is a good name for it. It's what you would typically do in a mix when you're trying to go to a solo lead sound. Yeah. And, you know, so many guys, they just hit the tube screamer because it has that mid-bump in it, and then you cut through the mix. In this case, it's in the guitar, yeah. and you're kind of driving it. I, I found that it was a throatier sound, particularly on the bridge humbucker. Totally. That it got dark um, and throaty, almost almost nasally in a way. It's, it's an interesting yeah, sound but, to it. Yeah, but cool, and especially like in those in-betweens, you get almost out of phase, kind of mm -hmm. cocked wah sound, the nasally sound. Um, it's I think it's versatile and cool, and I appreciate that they did that over just splitting, doing single coils. It gives this guitar, and that one with the dry switch, some a little different that's not just your modern humbucker change switch, which right. is all, you know, it's a little which different. Which you think, you've gone on record, you think it's overused, I think it's a little overused. overused. Yeah. I think stuff like this is uh, a nice direction to go in because it's giving you versatility. Yeah. Um, it's a little more with player the existing, minded, yeah, yeah. pickups. Um, so three way switch, different pu push push pull. Five way switch, different push pull. Mm -hmm. No binding. Bound. bound body, bound neck, bound headstock. Yeah. Um, the headstocks are a little different otherwise too, right? No, that's that's pretty. I think much it's it. same headstock, same tuners on them, which are nice. They feel good. It's. I, I gotta say, I like the tuners. I think it's an interesting option. Uh, it's an interesting Go choice vintage. that they went with. Yeah, because. Um, the backs aren't, they're, they're not, I mean, they're kind of like generic Grover style, sort of. Uh, but to go with a vintage looking Keystone style tuner was interesting. Interesting, not bad. No, and not bad at all. it's a smooth tune. I guess that's what matters, you know. These kind of, maybe the aesthetic they're going for on these is a modern interpretation of like a British car from the 60s, like an MG or something. Yeah, I could, I could see it for sure. It's got... Crisp lines, but it's still kind of throwback with the design with the stripe. Headstock is a little mod, mm -hmm. but I got the vintage style tuners. I mean, it's a unique look for sure. You're going to stand out. You won't be tricking people into thinking you're playing SG or something. No, they're very distinctive, and um, I think definitely for musicians who want to have something different from everybody else, they're, they're a great alternative. Well, let's listen to the demo, and then let's talk about feel on the other side of it. So... Uh, put your headphones on or good speakers if you want to hear what they actually sound like and check it out. Thank you. 
You got a good taste of what both of them sound like, clean and with a little spank on them. Uh, what were you running that through? Just a Blues Junior, right? Blues Junior, clean, dirty, EQs all up the middle, a touch of reverb, but kind of like how we've been doing it recently, turning that master down, cranking up the channel volume so you can get some of the natural kind of tube breakup sound. Um, and both of the humbucker pairs, I thought, accentuated like they were accentuated by the amp tone well you didn't get too muddy at any point yeah. 
you definitely know, I mean, you said it right, this is throatier, a little heavier, much hotter. You know, we, it was obvious going from heavy tone to clean tone. Heavy on this one to clean on that one, still big jump up in, in output. Um, and I was kind of, during the demos, trying to decide, do I like the stripped down, simpler version, or would I take advantage of having a lot more voices? And I think this is a more lead-minded guitar, right. um, which is, is interesting, having the entry level and then the step-up guitar kind of catered towards different tones. Uh, but I think it makes sense a little bit. I mean, this this does great lead. I mean, it's not like that it sags in any way. But um, this has more tools at your disposal to bump up the leads a little bit. I think it's kind of cool. You know, they're not just copies of each other with binding or something. It's so did you have a conclusion that you came to on that? Yeah, I think in my mind, I like simpler guitars, but the opportunity that you get to crank it up to get in between sounds which are my favorite electric guitar sounds you Agreed. know two yeah. and four and um, be able to push the leads to something that would never get lost I mean this would stand out for sure mm -hmm. in a recording in a live setting I'm gonna go with the standard um, but this is has the benefit of being much simpler guitar um, that the tones that are built in there are six this has ten they sound great I mean there's not a bad sound in either of them I would say this was a little superfluous with a few of the tones, you know, but that's kind of the trade-off you get. More options, less Some options. Some of them you're just not going to use. Some of them you're not going to use, but yeah. that's kind of how it goes already. So Yeah, overall, I really, you know, I dig these. I think the feel on them is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. We're talking about it's kind of like a chunky C-shaped neck. Um, what is this? A, it's a fairly flat radius. Pretty flat radius it's and um, something like that. I mean, it's... It's kind of this weird mix of a bunch of different feels of different yeah. guitars. Definitely plays more like a Les Paul than a Strat, obviously, but um, it's just unique. It's just something a little different that, you know, we did another Yamaha Electric Pacifica. You know what you're kind of getting with that one. It's mm -hmm. much more Strat-esque. This is kind of a beast unto itself, which is interesting and cool. I found it interesting that when these first came out, I really liked the body shape. I really liked that it's... It's just something that's kind of different in a very crowded market of Strat, Tele, and Les Paul knockoffs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I like those guitars, but I would like other manufacturers, um, like credit to Ernie Ball, all of their shapes are pretty different, mm -hmm. um, to come up with original shapes. And so I really uh, liked the initial appeal of the RevStars during the first launch. Yeah. And they, they just didn't find a lot of uh, success in the market. It was kind of this niche niche guitar. Mm -hmm. um, some of the people that I knew that bought them were kind of in indie bands or punk bands and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but I think these have a lot to offer and I'm anxious to get my hands on the pro model yeah. because everything we've ever played, I mean these really really play well and for the money and the fit and finish on these, that's the other thing. If you put it in the context of guitars in their price range, I think these come out ahead a lot of the time. Yeah. So I mean, think about that one. Four ninety nine, seven ninety nine. Okay. Yeah. Four hundred ninety nine dollars. You are now. That's the top end of like Squire territory or mid range Epiphone Les Paul type mm -hmm. stuff. Now I think you know there's some great Gretches in that price range that you know give a run for its money. But there's a lot of guitars for five hundred, six hundred bucks that don't have the fit and finish that the Element does. Yeah. Um, this is punching above its weight class, I think, in the fit and finish department. Mm -hmm. What do you think? No, I think for sure at seven ninety nine, you're competing with players, um, Epiphone, Les Paul, Modern, that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. like there's really good choices in that category. But what I like about say this one at four ninety nine, most of the guitars, electric guitars that you'll get at that price range are going to be super vintage minded, mm -hmm. like a classic vibe or really, really modern, like mm -hmm. a contemporary, something like that. Oh, that's a good point. This combines a lot. It's sort of mid-range in a good way. You're, you don't have to choose between total classic 1960s or 70s or 50s versus like real over-the-top progressive contemporary. I keep saying contemporary because I'm thinking about the contemporary active stuff from yeah. Squire. Um, but it's cool. It, it's its own thing without going either direction really hard. And this one, I think, 
uh, I you could tell me that's a twelve hundred dollar guitar. I, I believe it for right. sure. Right. Yeah, I agree. It'll be interesting to actually compare this one to the Pro mm -hmm. and see how distinctive the differences are. Yeah. Um, I have a theory, and we'll see if it holds true that when we got the first Red Label acoustics, um, the the Chinese made ones were were really good. Um, and the specs are very, very similar to the Japanese ones, but the Japanese ones are so much better that it was kind of shocking. Yeah. Uh, for you know, a few hundred dollars more, you got such an amazing guitar. I have a feeling that that might be how this goes. And I'm digging kind of the um, the alternativeness of this so much. Mm -hmm. I'm actually thinking, you know, high school me playing in a band with like my Zoom pedal would have really loved an element back then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And a crate amp. Uh, uh, now I'm getting That's nostalgic. All you need, dude. So. But uh, yeah, very, very cool guitars. I'm a big fan. Um, I would definitely rock this. This is actually a pretty tempting guitar to have for something that's different. Yeah, it's definitely different. It's got its own voice. And make sure to take a look. A lot of different colors, P90 options. They're both I, from Element to Pro. They make lefties, so definitely left-handed players that comment every once in a while on our videos that they love them, but they wish it was lefty. They did it. There you go. Um, yeah. Really cool guitars, I'm a fan. And they could match your motorcycle, so, you know, bonus. Mm -hmm. So if you want more information about these guitars, Cooper working. You're gonna wanna go to alamomusic.com, all go. right? Perfect. Look at all the Yamaha stuff right now because luckily we have gotten in some red labels. We've been waiting for over a year. Oh, man. We've been waiting for these for quite some time, and so. Yes, we've had a few false starts trying to do videos with these, so yeah. glad, to, glad we're finally doing one. Yeah, so these will be on the website, the cool Pacificas we got. Red Label, all, I mean, Yamaha acoustics, you know, we're big fans of, but browse all the Yamaha stuff, these will be there. Yamaha just makes good stuff. Yeah, and period. like you said with the Japanese made stuff, like when you just hear Yamaha Japan, especially with guitars, you know it's already going to be pretty fantastic. So yeah. looking forward to that. Awesome. Well, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like the videos, and I always say the best guitar in the world is the one that also you can get a motorcycle and a trombone and you know a tuba and a trumpet and a piano so and a cleaning kit and a cleaning kit <laughs> so there you go thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time